healthy dose of uh, psilocybin mushrooms. Uh, and I'm glad they're against the law. <laughs> you know what happened when I took them? I laid in a field of green grass for four hours going, my God, I love everything. <laughs> Psilocybin mushrooms are magical fungi that grow all around the world, even before Jesus was riding dinosaurs. Unlike most psychedelics, the psilocybin mushroom is a complete entheogen, meaning that you don't need to mix, match, cook or extract it to receive its full effects. It just grows from the ground ready to go mate. Some evidence would suggest that the use of psilocybin mushrooms date back to 9,000 years ago, based on the art at the Tassili Caves in Africa. The most common use for psilocybin mushrooms in ancient cultures was for spiritual healing and to communicate with the gods. However, not everybody was using mushrooms for benevolent purposes. Some written observations account the malevolent use of the mushroom among the Montezumanic people. Allegedly, during the emperor's coronation ceremony, many prisoners were sacrificed, had their flesh eaten and their hearts removed. Those who were invited guests to the feast ate mushrooms, which Diego Duran describes as causing those who ate them to go insane and many to take their lives. After the Spanish conquest, Catholic missionaries deemed all hallucinogenic plants and fungi as demonic tools basically which eventually diminished the religious use of magic mushrooms at least in mainstream culture but despite this mushrooms were still used in some remote areas Psilocybin mushrooms were later rediscovered in the West in the late 1950s by mycologist Gordon Wasson. He participated in a mushroom ceremony with Maria Sabina, a Mexican shaman who first introduced magic mushrooms, also known as the children, to the modern world. So basically if it wasn't for her, we probably wouldn't know about shrooms today. So Wasson then collected the spores of the mushroom, took them to Paris, which was later cultivated in Europe and its primary ingredient, psilocybin, was isolated in the laboratory by Swiss chemist Alexander. Albert Hoffman in 1958, and the rest is history. Now many people leave out that later in life, Maria Sabina actually regretted introducing mushrooms to Watson and ended up being ostracized from her community. She became bitter about her many misfortunes and how others had profited from her name. She felt that the ceremony of magic mushrooms had been irredeemably polluted by the hedonistic use of mushrooms. From the moment the foreigners arrived, the holy children lost their purity, they lost their force, they ruined them. Henceforth, they will no longer work, there is no remedy for it. Before Watson, nobody took the children and simply to find God, they were always taken to cure the sick. In 1957, Watson wrote the famous Life magazine article, Seeking the Magic Mushroom, which ended up inspiring psychedelic advocate Timothy Leary, who funded the Harvard Psilocybin Project with Richard Albert, now known as Ram Dass, promoting the psychological and religious study of psilocybin and other psychedelic drugs. For those who don't know, Leary was one of the most infamous leaders of the hippie counterculture movement which the government revolted against with the war on drugs and eventually banned any further research on psychedelic drugs, making them highly illegal substances. There is nothing smart, there is nothing uh, grown up or sophisticated in taking an LSD trip at all, they're just being complete fools. Anyone that would engage in this or indulge in this is just a plain fool. Psilocybin and psilocin are now listed as Schedule 1 drugs under the United Nations 1971 Convention on Psychotropic Substances. Schedule 1 drugs are defined as substances with a high potential for abuse or have no recognized medical uses. After a 40-year hiatus on psychedelic research, there has since been a psychedelic renaissance in the scientific community and mainstream culture. Something's going on. The, the culture is ready to have this conversation. I, I, I really think we're in an inflection point right now, and I did didn't see it coming. Nowadays, psychedelics such as psilocybin mushrooms have been recognized by the medical community as a legitimate medicine that can have profound effects when used in the right context, particularly for treating mental illness. And this can sound absolutely insane when you first hear this. It's like, yeah, all right, mate, I'm sure taking drugs is going to help me with my mental health bloody hippies. But if you take a closer look at the research, you'll quickly discover that there's actually something to this. It's not just idiots like me making silly claims, there are actual legitimate scientists from respected institutions such as the John Hopkins University, MAPS and Imperial College London that have conducted studies suggesting that psychedelics such as psilocybin, ayahuasca and ibogaine can significantly help with mental illness, drug addiction and even existential dread among others. And the results are looking very promising. Unlike other classes 
sources of drugs such as alcohol, caffeine, heroin or crystal meth, psilocybin mushrooms work very differently. For example, when you consume alcohol or nicotine, you know exactly what you're in for, since these drugs have a very specific mechanism. But psychedelics like psilocybin have a non-specific amplifying effect on human consciousness, which results in vastly different experiences from person to person. Sometimes life transformative mystical experiences, and other times a complete psychotic breakdown. But as Joseph Campbell once said, the psychotic drowns in the same waters in which the mystic swims with delight. And this is exactly why set and setting is so crucial for these type of experiences and why these tools are not for everybody. Jung told people, he talked about mescaline and LSD in the context of Huxley's introduction of those substances into the Western world. The first thing he said is, beware of unearned wisdom. <laughs> it's like, yeah, man, that's great. And he also said, you, you have to be very careful about, about entering the realm of the gods because you end up with a responsibility that might be more crushing than you can tolerate. I've never read anyone who wrote wiser words about the dangers of psychedelic use than that because he didn't say, well, none of this is real. He said, it's more real than you want it to be. And so watch the hell out. When ingested, psilocybin, the active ingredient in magic mushrooms, quickly metabolizes into psilocin, which acts as a 5-HT, 2A, 2C, and 1A agonist. Now, in English, this means that psilocybin attaches to our serotonin receptors, similar to a key fitting a lock. Serotonin, which is primarily found in the body's stomach and intestines, is the chemical responsible for regulating mood, visuals, decision-making, sleep, and digestion. Physically speaking, psilocybin mushrooms are virtually non-toxic and anti-addictive. In other words, it's almost impossible to physically die from consuming mushrooms and to develop a physical dependence. I mean, it's not very often you hear of a shroom addict. Gotta see those fractals, man. However, psychologically, this is another story. But at the end of the day, this really comes down to the individual's mental state and the environment one trips in. The mushroom experience is notorious for giving you access to the unconscious, which of course results in different experiences since everyone has a unique mind. Maybe this is why quote unquote bad trips can be so terrifying because they can show you repressed aspects of your psyche, which can be quite uncomfortable, especially if you've been running away from your shadow your whole life. And this is why building the foundation of your mind is of utmost importance. Similar to most psychedelics, mushrooms are a perfect example of extreme polarity within the human experience, especially at high doses. In fact, many times a mushroom trip can either take you to heaven or hell, sometimes both within the same trip. However, I do want to distinguish a bad trip from a challenging trip. A challenging trip, which may be perceived as horrific at the time, can actually produce long-term benefits when integrated. Whereas a bad trip, can cause severe psychological damage, which may not be super common, but it definitely does happen, which needs to be acknowledged. We can't always pull a leery and blindly worship the mushroom gods. We must stay critical and see things as they are. I mean, let's not forget that it's this sort of reckless behavior that fueled the prohibition of psychedelics in the first place. In the best case scenario, psilocybin has helped people with clinical depression, cluster headaches, bipolar syndrome, OCD, nicotine addiction, and even existential despair, which in some cases result in literally saving lives. Now, in the worst case scenarios, mushrooms can do quite the opposite and actually trigger PTSD, depression, and existential despair. Some people have developed full-blown psychosis, which they never recovered from, and others have even taken their own life. Psychedelics are no joke, and remember that we are just at the infancy stage of psychedelic research. There's still a lot that we don't know. But what we can say is that psychedelics are incomprehensibly strange and ineffable. I believe that there's a transcendent ethic. And I do believe that it touches on the metaphysical. I believe that people experience that because people are perfectly capable of having unutterably profound religious experiences. And the naturalistic materialists don't know what the hell to do with that. They have no idea what to do with that fact. Say, well, it's delusional. It's like, well, hang on a sec. People who have those experiences appear to be more successful and healthier. Mm -hmm. It's like, so in exactly in what manner is that delusional? One of the most famous psilocybin studies was conducted in the John Hopkins University, which found that psilocybin can occasion a mystical experience. In this study, two thirds of the participants reported that the psilocybin session was among the top five most spiritually significant experiences of their life. And mind you, this is up there with the birth of their first child and the death of a parent. A third of them even ranked it at the very top. And this is unprecedented in the psychiatric field. And I spent a lot of time talking to patients, many of whom were dying. 
uh, about how this single psil- high-dose psilocybin experience, a guided psilocybin experience, the image people have is popping some mushrooms in your mouth and maybe going to a concert or going to the beach, but this is a very di- controlled internal experience, uh, completely reset these people's attitude toward death and, and yeah. allowed them to die with equanimity. It was one of the most effective psychiatric interventions that these psychiatrists had ever seen. Now, of course, we must note that all of these studies carefully screen their patients and make sure it's in a very controlled environment with professional practitioners that help the participants before, during, and after their psilocybin experience, which isn't exactly how most people trip on mushrooms in the real world. There's a big difference between consuming a carefully measured dose of psilocybin with a psychologist in a controlled environment and just taking mushroom caps in a festival, which is obviously a very unpredictable environment. And at the end of the day, it's the integration phase, which is even more important than the trip itself. As I've stated before, mushrooms are an extremely polarizing power tool. It can be used practically, such as building a house, or destructively, like accidentally chopping your arm off. This is why it could be wise to work your way up and safely learn how to use the basic tools first, i.e. meditation, exercise, diet, shadow work, etc. The scientific research behind psilocybin is looking very promising, especially because it's unlike any class of compounds on Earth. And just like any profound technology, it has the potential to be used towards the good of mankind, particularly in the mental health scene, if used responsibly, of course. More people are anxious, depressed, and committing suicide more than ever before in recorded history, so obviously something needs to change here. Perhaps we can consider opening up therapeutic centers with professional guides that administer psychedelics for those who wish to save safely consume them. But we must also stay super vigilant when approaching these powerful tools which demand respect. They may be all fun and games in the lower doses, but if you use mushrooms irresponsibly, they may not be such a fun guy. Psilocybin has the potential to help you step outside yourself and observe life from a different perspective. And I don't think I'm just speaking for myself when I say that these life transforming trips can result in gaining compassion, insight and self knowledge that we as a human race so desperately need during these turbulent times. And the most mind boggling thing about psilocybin is that you only really need to do it once or twice in your lifetime and it can really stay with you for the rest of your life. Now, of course, I'm not saying go out to your local forest and munch on these mushrooms. If you're not prepared and go overboard with these drugs, you can really mess yourself up and lose grip of reality and develop solipsism and derealization and things like this. However, with the responsible use of psilocybin, these compounds can transform not only the mental health scene, but how we view consciousness altogether. Like Stan Groff once said, psychedelics used responsibly and with proper caution would be for psychiatry what the microscope is for biology and medicine or the telescope is for astronomy. And for obvious reasons, making nature illegal has never ended well. I think it's our birthright to have the freedom to explore our own consciousness as long as we're not hurting anybody else. Unbiased education is the key here, not throwing people in cages because they prefer a different drug than you do. But whether you're for or against psychedelics, I think we can all agree that psilocybin has an incredibly profound effect on human consciousness. And I don't think it's too far-fetched to say that we're barely scratching the surface here. I don't think there is much doubt about it for you and me, for many of us, that at least psychedelic chemicals, not all drugs, but psychedelic chemicals, have a capacity to cut through places where you are attached and clinging, to set them aside and show you a possibility. The problem is that they don't allow you to become the possibility, they only show you the possibility. Then after a few hours, you lose the view of the possibility and you have it only as a memory. And I would be a hypocrite if I knocked drugs. At the same moment, let me point out that it is not a full client. And once you know the possibility, you might as well get on with it. Getting on with it means cleaning out the places that you have the attachments, not overriding them. And what chemicals do is they override them. And finally, you get so greedy to be done that you just start to want to deal with your shit rather than pushing it under the rug all the time. And at that point, you start to not try to get high, but work with your lows. And then drugs lose their savor or their pull. For some people, they could be useful but I don't believe that for anybody that's able to sit in this room and know what I'm talking about, they are any longer necessary.